Hello, my darlings. Welcome to another episode of Bougie Best Friend. I'm talking to my friend Lisa Gilmore today, and we are sharing some pretty uncomfortable slash pick me moments from our past, from our twenties. Some. Hey, Rocky. I don't know why he's always crying when I'm trying to record for my podcast. But yeah, today's episode is a pretty embarrassing one because we share some stories that um, we're not very proud of. So please keep this all to yourself. But I think this is going to help a lot of us (laughs) to feel less alone and realize that everybody makes mistakes in their youth. In other news, I am going to New York for New York Fashion Week. I'm pretty excited because I haven't been in, I think, I don't know, two years. But when I was living in New York, I was... As a makeup artist, I was working backstage and it was just always, I always loved Fashion Week and I always felt like really cool that I'm there. (laughs) But yeah, I'm getting ready now to, I should be actually packing instead of recording this right now. I should have recorded this like three days ago, but I kind of like to leave things for the very last minute. I feel like I work better under pressure, but that's something I would like to change, honestly, because I'm like super stressed out right now because I literally have to um, pack my suitcase and... Yeah, I'm going to keep this intro short because recently somebody said uh, in a review that I share a lot of frivolous moments in my intros. So I'm just going to keep it short and sweet. I have so many fun episodes coming up with some amazing female CEOs, women I admire. I'm really excited about that. One is the CEO of Vogue, the jewelry line I created a collection with. I'm so in love with my collection. I wear it every single day and I decided to give you guys a little discount. Like nobody else is getting this. Like I'm not going to post it on Instagram. I'm not going to post it on TikTok. I'm not even going to talk about it. It's just for my bougie bestie podcasting queens, like people who listen to this. I want to give you a 20% off if you go to Vove's website. I'm going to link it in the show notes. Just use the code COCO20. As always, if you like the episode, please leave a five-star rating and a review because it helps the show grow and it just means so much. And now I really have to get to packing because I already, I'm already like nervous sweating. <laughs> Bye-bye. Okay. Hi. Hello. What's up? We're rolling. Rolling. Okay, we're, we're on a tight schedule. I know. We have shit to do. So basically, I thought it would be fun to do, to talk about shit that we've endured <laughs> from dusty ass men that we should not have endured. Mm-hmm. Like things our exes did that we still stayed around for. Yeah, all the BS we tolerated, which made us very strong, you know, strong and knowledgeable. Wise. Yeah. I wouldn't be the woman I am today. Yeah, we couldn't give this advice if you didn't go through a lot of these dusty yeah. losers. Exactly. So should we just like nail them <laughs> out? So we have some, we have, I think you have more submissions than I do from the public. Yeah, I I think let's start with yours. Actually, you know what I want to start? I want to talk me. about what did you learn? Like what what is the first thing that comes to your mind right now when I ask you about like a specific situation from your past, like a dusty man okay what is the first thing that comes to your mind like what what are you never going to tolerate again i have two okay so and they're both so cliche but i I think first like now i understand why cliches are so cliche because like i'm like oh that actually tracks (laughs) yeah the first one is truly to trust how you feel because with my serial cheater ex Mm. What did you feel? I just knew some shit was going on. I mm. knew that it wasn't right. I knew I shouldn't be tolerating this. Not because he was a bad person. I mean, he was kind of bad, but in the moment, <sighs> I mean, a he, wasn't, is a bad person. he wasn't like, like bad to me until I found out. You know what I mean? And I think I didn't want to trust my feelings because I use my anxiety as a scapegoat. I'm like, oh, I'm just anxious. It's just me being anxious. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, bitch. There's yeah. th- Those are two completely different things. Mm-hmm. So that's my first one is to trust how you feel, especially if it's a patterned feeling. You're mm-hmm. feeling it more than once, mm-hmm. right? Like there's a reason why you're feeling that. And <laughs> I'm feeling it right now because I'm just like putting myself back in a situation where I was. Like, and you're it's feeling crazy triggered. how women literally feel. I don't know if you know this, when men and women talk about a situation, women actually feel the same feelings they felt then. You know how guys are like, why are you bringing this up? And why are you acting like this just happened? Because like, I'm literally feeling the feelings. That's so interesting. I never thought about it that way. You think they just don't, they don't feel, they feel like logically, not emotionally. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. What's the second one? 
The second one is not as deep. It's not as serious, but it still matters because it's still like time invested. But it's the second thing that comes to mind is to not be afraid to say what I actually want. Mm. I will never do that again. Interesting. What about you? I'm always, I was, I mean, I learned a lot. I don't know if I used to be, I think I was always pretty vocal and like saying, this is not okay, this is not okay, but then I would let it happen again and again and again. Why? Because I thought that this is the best I could do. Mm. I thought that I'm, when I was in my 20s, I, I mean, I moved to New York when I was 22. I was single in the beginning. Then I was dating like crazy people and like cheaters and liars and, you know, just a lot. Like there were multiple? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there was. I know about the big one. Yeah. The big one. <laughs> the big one. <laughs> the big daddy. <laughs> I mean, let's not call him that. He yeah, was, no. He was Does nothing. Does not deserve the daddy yeah. title, actually. No. Um, I revoke it. In that relationship, obviously, we're not going to name any names or like. No. If our exes are listening to this right now, you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Is that about you or about the guy before you You'll or the guy know. after you? Like, don't even think that this is about you, sweetie. I just know when I was in a relationship, I was believing, like, I just, you have common sense. Mm -hmm. And then you have somebody telling you that your common sense is it's not, wrong. yeah, that it's wrong. It's like, you're not seeing things clearly. Like he, let's say you see it in his phone that he's texting another girl and you're like, who is this? And, oh, it's my friend from uh, childhood. But then you're sending fucking selfies and you're sending like, em you know, emojis and all that. And I have a question. Do you think you believed it because you had never gone through that? A, B, because of just age, you hadn't been through, maybe you hadn't developed a certain backbone or you just didn't know what both. some people were capable of? Or C, he was manipulating you all three <laughs> all okay. the above all the above okay i okay let me just talk about this one specific situation i was dating someone and they just didn't so like they would tell me one thing and they would do the other thing so they would tell me that they love me they want to be with me but their actions were showing like the complete opposite they were like going out aloud partying adding random girls and fucking instant you know all the time a new girl every time you go out to a client meeting, quote unquote, <laughs> you get a, you get, you start following another girl. And then I knew that was wrong, but then he convinced me that this is, there's a reason for it. He convinced me that it was he like work it. related. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what is a random girl that's shaking her booty on a boat? How is that work related? What are these meetings you're having? Yeah, I, <laughs> and can I come? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, I just feel like I was also, I also felt like relationships were su supposed to hurt and it's supposed to be difficult and it's supposed to be like that romantic comedy. I want to talk about this. Sure, go ahead. No, because I think a lot of people still have that mindset. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I think there's a blurry line of, yes, of course, they're not easy, right? I think yeah. there's one, we can say relationships aren't easy, but we can also say they're not supposed to be that yeah. fucking hard. Yeah. I feel like this is often a conversation I hear where they're like, well, I'm going to put up with all this because he's the one. He's not the one. If he, you have to be putting up with every, like it, you're not supposed, like now when I'm dating Wes and I'm, this is my first healthy relationship. Yeah. I see how this is supposed to feel. And right. now I'm like, how did I tolerate all of this nonsense? And again, I was young and I didn't have anybody who can tell me otherwise. My friends, if you have friends that are the same age, they don't have, like, they, they're experiencing the same things. And then you have old, like, then I had friends who were telling me this is good. Like, you would, there's so many worse men out there. Like, you, are, you should be happy with that. And that is the worst piece of advice I ever received, that, like, I should just be happy with what I have because there's worse men out there. And then here I am telling you that I feel like shit, that I'm actually having anxiety, that I'm actually, you know, when your body is yes. physically telling you something is wrong. Yep. I was dating this guy who he would just like go out nonstop. I would call him. He would literally decline my call. So like, imagine you wake up at 2 a.m. You feel something is wrong. You're calling and oh, calling and calling. Up. He's declining, not even like letting it ring. He's literally declining the phone call. And then I, you know, like in your stomach yeah, when yeah, you start yeah. feeling like <laughs> this may be TMI, but then like I had to go to the bathroom and poop because my body was like, Yo, oh, it's so something real. Like even right now, my like palms are sweating because I feel like I'm there. And like, how did I let this happen? I don't know. 
But you know what I just was thinking of as you're saying that is this is just another example of how important it is to be so careful about who's around you. Because mm -hmm. look at the advice you were getting. Yes. Trash advice. Bullshit. But that's if everybody around you is saying that, then you're going to feel like you're the one who's crazy. And when you. OK, I need my girlies to listen to this. You're in a relationship and you love this person and they love you back. And they're constantly hurting you. And you're like, well, they love me. So what they're doing, maybe, you know, it's not so wrong because whoever loves me wouldn't hurt me. So like, I deserve this. Mm -hmm. It's almost like they're brainwashing you into thinking that this is the way you should be treated because somebody who loves you, they're not going to let you. If I tell you, Lisa, I have a problem with X, Y, Z and you just don't do anything about it. Not only yeah, you I don't, don't do anything about it, you just continue doing it even more and more and more. And then it's like, well, why are you staying in that relationship? I think the problem is a lot of people want to be the exception and nine times out of 10, they are the rule. Yeah. They want to be the one that's like, no, <laughs> always think this one is going to be different. <laughs> like, no, he is really my person. It's just, you know, we're going through yeah. a million and 300 fucking things. And it's like, life is so hard already. Why the fuck? Yeah. Are you putting up with all this shit? Yeah. yeah. You know? You shouldn't be putting up with that. I will. Okay. I'll, I'll, I have to tell you one story. Okay. I was dating this person and they were not picking up or replying or anything, whatever. And I was supposed to meet him and his friends later at a bar or something. I show up and he's with like five girls, six girls. How did you know where he was? He told me where he was. Oh, so he's dumb. No, no, no. I was supposed to meet them. But I thought it's going to be male, female, some kind of ratio. Like, you're not going to be the only man with fucking five, six girls. I, this is my third curse word in this episode. I'm, like, getting lit up. I show up, and I see him standing there with literally all these women with his phone in his hand while I'm texting him, hey, I'm on the way, like, I'll see you. Is this a boyfriend? Yes. No response. How old are you? I was maybe... 26 okay seven maybe okay. i don't know i blocked out <laughs> that time of my life <laughs> but i was so imagine this you're expecting to meet your man and his friends he's not replying but you know where he is so like you're just gonna come because he told you to come and then you see him standing there with six women with his phone in his hand is not replying to you are these friends are these random these were friends but he never told me that this is this is the thing also Communication is everything. Everything. If you just tell me, hey, I'm going to introduce you to five of my girlfriends. best girlfriends from college, from childhood, from, I don't know, your yeah. whatever, then I know what I'm walking into. Totally. If I'm expecting to see you there with like three couples and I see you with five fucking girls. Goodbye. One more fucking. <laughs> I'm, I, it, there's, it just totally, my night was ruined the yeah. moment I walked in and his night was ruined. I don't know about the other people, but like you pretty much set me up and then you expected me to just so you walked in and what did he do he said hi and introduced me to everyone and like the look on my are face are you like why didn't the why the fuck didn't you answer your phone yeah i mean what is he saying this this person just often did not pick up his phone okay but it was like he just put it on me that like i'm introducing you to my friends and you're making a big deal about yeah, this like, calm down and, and blah 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 and then I can't really fake it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I can't like pretend like I'm yeah, happy either. and my face was just like like this right now the entire evening. And it was my fault somehow. It was my fault that I created I made a scene. I did, you know, I no made accountability. The, yeah. Zero. You know what I've loved about being single for my whole life? <laughs> um <laughs> not my whole life i'm being dramatic but um most of it yeah you know what i've loved is i have observed so many relationships situationships marriages divorces everything and i and not that that's what's taught me what i want and what i don't want but it's definitely added to what I know, especially what I know that I don't want and mm -hmm. what I know that I will not tolerate or th li even little things like down to the little tiny details that I'm like, oh, I would not be OK with that. I would not be putting up with that. And that's fine. Right. Like to each their own. But to anybody who is single, maybe you're in a season of singleness. And 
maybe you're frustrated i don't know i always tell my fellow single queens like use it as an opportunity to honestly like look around you yeah look around at the relationships in your life and get to know them and be with them i love third wheeling i i'm you should third wheel with us i would love to yeah. i loved us so like that. that would be so easy for me like i i observing i've taken so much inventory of mm -hmm. like what i actually think mm -hmm. my relationship will hopefully look like or just more more specifically what i don't want it to look mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. you know i have to say that i when i was younger i was dating this guy it was summer it's like a summertime fling and he had a girlfriend and i knew about it and he was like i already talked about this on my podcast so this is like not the first time that i'm sharing that i was with a guy who had a girlfriend i was 18 so like i was really dumb and we've all been there i thought that i was cool that he because he was obviously, like he was picking you yeah he was obviously telling me that he can break up with her because of xyz and then i he just like wants to be with me yep. so bad and i will never forget i i felt like trash in this very moment so i was with him this was in croatia and we were at this island Hvar. and he, to get to this island you have to come with a ferry like with a little catamaran or whatever and i was hanging out with him let's say till 1 p.m and he and we literally separated like we would we were walking out of his apartment i'm scared of what you're gonna say <laughs> nothing nothing bad we were walking out of this apartment where we were staying or whatever we weren't staying together but like where he was staying or something he went to, to the right to meet up with her and i went to the left to go home i felt like and that so that was the first time you knew or he not that you he didn't know but me, no i yeah. know but that you were physically experiencing it yes she was coming to Hvar. like she was coming and you knew that yeah god and he was just telling me how she like they had these plans from a long time ago and she like has to come right now and he doesn't want her to and he does not you know just like yeah yeah, yeah. the entire the script i swear they have a fucking manual yeah yeah maybe they have maybe yeah they, maybe they're selling it somewhere like a course how to like i'll, I'll call my ex women. and ask him <laughs> love that <laughs> but i just think i what did you feel i felt like trash i felt like i was brainwashed i felt like he was just it was not even a real relationship with this guy but like we were just like a situation ship like a summer situation ship uh which it was just whatever but and then later he would like hook up with my friends and i was like thinking my fr why is my friend hooking up with this guy that i was hooking up with but it was just it was it was a lot this reminds me of just the concept that i feel like so many of us women have fallen to where it's we all want to be chosen yeah like we want to be the one who gets picked and i think that's sometimes a reason why we'll put up with situations like these or why we will maybe not even something so so intense as being the other woman right mm -hmm. but maybe just being in a relationship where you're you know that you want more maybe mm -hmm. he's a good guy maybe you guys no are... this one was trash no i know i know <laughs> but i'm saying like even in situations where like the guy maybe he's yeah. a good guy but you just know like this is kind of whatever like you know what i mean like i mm -hmm. have conversations like this with people where they're like yeah i mm -hmm. never want to fucking feel like that like i want to be madly in love and i understand it's yeah. not going to be a fairy tale forever but like i don't want to be in a relationship where i'm like yeah i mean you know mm -hmm. it yeah, is what it yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking yeah. i'd rather yeah. be alone yeah like yeah. sometimes we'll put up with these situations because we're like well yeah you know we were we were we were chosen yeah chosen by the bad player during covid i was single in new york that was like my first time at like being single in like an adult like yeah, you're you're a relationship girly yeah for i don't know why like i I would always i don't know i think also because i moved to the us solo so yeah. i always needed like somebody yeah and then the first relationship i had was really really bad i can't even like talk about him yeah. because he's like so in, it's no does not deserve even not a second even, of our time no air time for you I, I i don't know for some reason like i gave money to every single ex-boyfriend i have like so many of my exes owe me give money. them money yeah we should send them invoices then <laughs> should we invoice them i feel like a lot of people after a very traumatic experience will become very hardened i'm not saying that didn't mm -hmm. happen i'm just saying a lot of people will become so closed off yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> and i'm so happy that <laughs> your heart remained open yeah and now you're in like a lot a of therapy <laughs> i know but i'm so happy that that didn't i mean we're working on it it's fine but yeah it makes me so happy that it didn't 
close your heart off because yeah. now look at where you are. I know. You know, I, 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 I relate to that. And I think I just always loved love. Yeah. And that's so cute. Um, I, I have to tell you about this situation when I was single during COVID. I, it was like the first time that I was th- single <laughs> in not, America. Not really, but um, I was going out a lot and I was meeting all these like I just got into this group of people in New York that would like go out a lot. They were all like super hot. They were all, it was a good time, but, (laughs) uh, but it was, it was just very fun. I never experienced that before, but at the same, would you call it a hoe era? Oh yeah. Yeah. For sure. Okay. We love a hoe era. Totally. I, (laughs) it was my first one. Wow. Almost because I mean, when I first moved to the U S I had a little bit of an era like that because it was like the first time that it was so when you were growing I'm, i know i'm jumping around but like okay. growing up in croatia it's such a small town yeah so you go to a restaurant with somebody and everybody sees you and everybody goes the gossiping. same way yeah, you can't like date multiple people at the same time oh no we did it anyway but it was just like oh yeah everybody knew the second you, I did. you like sneezed and the whole city knew croatia was like if you're with someone you're with someone what do croatian men look like they're tall they're tall I'm and sold. they <laughs> <laughs> and they were fanny the bars packs. in hell they were like a fanny pack um, <laughs> oh i don't i don't like that i'll introduce it to you i don't like i, a, I don't like a fanny pack but that's fixable yeah <laughs> but um so when i was in covid like a little little like crazy era i just remember how i had a few situationships and how desperate i was for them to pick me so there was this one specific guy I, he's like not really relevant in my life but he was really cool. He was one of the coolest guys at the party scene. And I, um, and he saw me at a party and he never saw me before. And he was like, always going to these same parties. And he, he asked my friend at the time, like, who is that blonde girl? And he's like, I want her. And then he was doing a, like, he was trying to like win me over whatever. Putting in the work. I mean, not really, but <laughs> he like took me on a date. Um, <laughs> but- like he smiled at me. <laughs> he was very charming but soon i realized that his personality sucked was so like i could not hold a conversation with him he was almost like too philosophical like he wouldn't make like if i tell you about it like look at this lip gloss that i'm wearing he'll be like do you know that lip glosses are I mean, he doesn't know anything about lip glosses, but like he would just get it so deep unnecessary yeah so at that time was he high um, maybe <laughs> i don't maybe all the time i don't know i wouldn't be surprised. just exploring possibilities you know yeah yeah yeah. no for sure he was high at some point but i was like i didn't even enjoy hanging out with him i was just spending time with him because it gave me a sense of validation he picked me yeah he picked me but the funny thing is he didn't even pick me because he was like hooking up with other girls constantly in front of me and i would still want his text messages at 3 a.m i would want him to text me at 3 a.m to like come over because he would have like house parties at home too this episode is sponsored by happy v i have to tell you something i take a supplement every single day that supports my vaginal health why because i need to keep my v happy which is why my go-to is happy v's prebiotic probiotic in addition to supporting vaginal health they also target gut and overall health this might be tmi for some but even during high stress phases i can tell when things aren't as bougie down there as they should be and this often happens when your vaginal ph is imbalanced if you ever struggled with vaginal infections bacterial vaginosis unusual discharge or odor you are not alone and that's exactly why this company was created it's a female founded wellness company dedicated to help women lead healthier more empowered lives they're truly unlike any other probiotic on the market featuring patented probiotic strains at clinically proven dosages i also love their digestive enzyme and chlorophyll drops and i just got a little discount for you so you can head over to happyv.com and use my code happy coco for 15 percent off site-wide that's happyv via and vagina.com and use my code happy coco for 15 percent off happyv.com code happy coco I feel like the brain, my brain, I'm going to donate my brain Mm. when I'm no longer here because why do we always want to be picked by the ones that don't want us? Yeah, I don't know. And maybe because it's like more struggle. So it's like, it's going to be worth more. Cause like, think about it when like all the nice guys or, you know how they say nice guys finish last. Not true. I am looking for a nice man with a beautiful heart and tall and rich and beautiful. And the man in finance. Um, But I don't know if I want a man in finance. 
You know that song? Now? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, actually, I don't discriminate industries, but <laughs> um, like I think about this guy that I dated a few years ago. I honestly always think about him. Like, I hope he's doing so well. He was like the nicest man, like a Southern gentleman. Mm-hmm. But I was bored to death. Okay. Bored by his personality? No, or? he had a personality, but I'm a lot in the best way like yeah, i have a, the best way i have a big personality like i love i love that about myself it's taken a long time for me to love that about myself i need a man who can like put me in my place mm-hmm. you know like a little masculine energy yeah like, like i want a man like mm-hmm. a big daddy like i want <laughs> someone who's gonna like be like stop you're doing this a lot are you like <laughs> i mean you can interpret you, that as you wish yeah no I, I didn't mean it like that I, but i know how you mean it yeah yeah, yeah. but yeah. you know what i mean and yeah. he was just like i my friends were like you would eat him up for mm-hmm. breakfast lunch and dinner mm-hmm. and he was so sweet and i would tell my mom about him and she's like like my mom is like the cutest most hispanic catholic woman she was just like what's wrong with yeah. a nice guy like give him a chance please <laughs> i went on like three dates with this guy because mm-hmm. i was like he's so, he was hot he was cute smart Worked in law, like check, 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 check. So law is just, approved. Law's approved. Um, he was a lawyer, like absolutely. Yeah. But he's so nice. But I was just like, I am bored. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. You need to be. And it wasn't in the toxic way of like I want them to be mean and ma- no, no. Like I'm so sensitive. I I can't. Yeah. I'll start crying if someone's mean to me. Like I can't. No. But mm. just like I need a little something, yeah, you know. Yeah, and he was just spice. the nicest. And again, it didn't make me. I didn't feel like flattered that I felt like he was pursuing me or that I felt mm-hmm. like chosen that he was so verbal about like I want to date you I want to take take you seriously no fast forward to last year I was dating this guy who was not trying to get that into the one a relationship that I know about you know about two we had okay. two main stars last year <laughs> one of them um he great guy literally uh-huh. I had the best time with him so funny like but we had a very friendship vibe like uh-huh. there was obviously attraction and sexual chemistry and everything but I think we had a yeah we just got along really well as friends but i really really wanted him to pick me mm-hmm. you know and i think it was because i knew he didn't want a relationship and i'm sorry but when guys say that it's usually like they don't want a relationship with you yeah we need to say that loud and clear and like listen it sucks to hear i think that they're gonna find a way to make it work if they want to make it work i agree with which that. is me and wes we both moved to Miami for work. We both did not want a relationship. It was like single in Miami, living life. And we met and it just happened. Yeah. And we made sure like we just put in the effort to be together. And it wasn't even, I don't know. It was just everything with him was so easy. And with my, you know, in my past, it was like pulling teeth almost with some relationships and also with okay i have to tell you one funny story that just came to my mind i did not remember this story in like five years for sure in my single era in new york i was on some kind of app met this random dude and first off i would always judge them based on the restaurant they would take me interesting i would not go to a shitty restaurant see can i say something yes i could like a man could take me to mcdonald's and i would be happy and i'm not even saying that to be like oh my god i don't know like i just i have i don't care about like i'll eat anything Mm. for me it's not about eating it's about like what are you that's a lie if a man was like let's go to mcdonald's i'd be like it's like if you're this is the first impression like show me what you got so this dude i take it back yeah (laughs) <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I don't need to go somewhere where there's seven forks on my side. I, I like a se- seven forks. I fork don't, because I don't know what to do with all of them. Yeah. You start I mean, from I the used outside. to work in fine dining, you work, so you, I... You start from the outside in, right? Outside in. Outside in, yeah. yeah. See, I'm not a bougie eater. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'm a bougie best yeah. friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, you don't really care about food that much. I but love food, but I am a picky eater. <laughs> there was this dude. First off, he was really tall. He didn't really look like his photos, but I'm like, okay, fine. I hated his perfume. That was like, it never happened to me before that like I sat across, like, I, I guess like I came first and yeah. he came, I don't usually like arrive on time for dates. I mean, I do, but I did <laughs> because now I live with Wes. <laughs> anyway, uh, I didn't like his perfume. I felt like, again, I used to work in restaurants and like we were really taught like steps of service wine yeah like, you're extra particular about that very yeah this dude didn't know how to pick a bottle of Sauvignon Blanc I did not like that but what do you mean he didn't know how to pick one he didn't know which one he wanted like I was like I like Sauvignon Blanc let me see what you got like yeah. let me see which one you're gonna order 
because I had the opportunity. <laughs> I was hanging out with a lot of like wealthy, yeah, knowledge like people that are high up in New York, men in positions of power. Yeah, and then I see the way they handle things. I see the way they treat do a woman. Do you still know any of them? Are they single? Yeah. What are you doing? Okay, I'll connect you over text <laughs> with a few. But I just. Like, I was just used to a certain treatment. Right. Some of these guys were just friends, and they would, like, pay for my Uber. Or they would take me. Like, they would just take care of everything. And didn't expect anything in return. Thing. Right. I know when I say, like, oh, we've all been there. You know, we've all gone through that. Sometimes I'm like, I hope that with this digital age that we live in, where we have so much information at our fingertips, like, you could literally look up any single question, any single topic, and you will find... 300 podcast episodes a youtube video a documentary a film like a professional yeah. everything i really hope that women don't have to go through these situations to then one day get to sit behind a microphone and be like i don't want you to go through this because i had to you know i saw this quote you know? recently don't get into <laughs> try to avoid a toxic relationship so don't become a motivational speaker no dead ass <laughs> like i'm not here by choice yeah you know same. but no but and that's why also i love to share about just crazy shit in general. Give me one crazy just, shit story. A I mean, big my one, a drama one. My craziest one is when I was doing a sexy story. It's not sexy, but the craziest one I have <gasps> is my best story. But it's too long, and we have to wrap up soon. But I'm gonna summarize it. It is when I started dating this man. I too was in a hoe era, and I was very honest about it with him. And he was from the get go like so persistent on the fact that he was not going to see anybody else he didn't want to see anybody else i was like cool didn't ask truly i was like that's great but i really didn't care because yeah. in my head as soon as i met him i knew it was not going to be serious and because i was entertaining other people that i was really enjoying so i didn't really care for that information you know when like you can't wait for a guy to say that to you like yeah. i didn't care yeah. when he would say it to me i'd be like cute that's it mm -hmm. it was fun because i felt like i had him like in the palm of my hand i did not plot twist she did not plot twist um and <gasps> he lived in a different city Mm -hmm. he was divorced that's the all the information that i had at mm -hmm. the current moment and mm -hmm. we were very different religions mm -hmm. to the point where it does become a problem like i know there are some where yeah. it's not an issue i am very religious he was very religious and we were like very different religions yeah and so there were just a lot of things in my head where i was like this is not gonna work right yeah but we were having a great time i thought he was a great person i honestly still think he has a good heart despite being a piece of shit <laughs> um and we had so much fun he was very lavish everything was a big deal everything was gifts this mm -hmm. that like another level anyone who's dated like an arab man knows how they are been there it's so fucking fun <laughs> so i will say <laughs> and it was just great because he was a great person like we had such a good time long story short i find out one day he's like oh i actually have a kid i was oh, like oh god okay like out of nowhere this, no no he was like well i didn't want to say anything because i didn't want to you know mm -hmm. ruin this whatever so he tells me he has a kid and i'm like okay i'm just gonna add that to the list of why this is going to be very complicated then we go on this like insane trip to turkey and i was like fuck i i'm starting to like this guy mm -hmm. <laughs> like five months in i'm like i think i like him you mm -hmm. know and i told him i was like okay i'm blowing off the roster and i did then I think it was the last month of everything. I started to feel weird. This is when I told you. I just started to feel weird. I knew something was up. I didn't know what it was, but I knew something was up. And basically, I found out through a phone call that his girlfriend, not even ex-wife, girlfriend, okay? She found my number in his phone and under saved what it. what name? It was under my name, but he would archive our conversations on WhatsApp mm -hmm. so that you don't see, you know how mm -hmm. you can do yeah, that? Yeah, okay. You know what? When you're done with the story, we have to talk about some tricks that guys do to screw with you. Okay. And she found my name, my information, saved my number, called me a million times and told me like, hey, um, I know you're going to judge me, but I am married and I don't think you know any of this wait, but wait, she was married hold on she's in a marriage uh -huh. with kids uh -huh. okay she's cheating on his hu on her husband with him my guy plot twist here's the biggest one the wives are friends oh so i'm not even like i'm not even the office i'm like the cloak like the coat closet <laughs> oh and the last part was he he didn't just have one son he had another one and it was like he the second son was like 10 months old i'm sorry let me just and okay. sorry the last thing 
the the <laughs> girlfriend. Process. I know it's hard. I need to draw like a vent, like a map. <laughs> the girlfriend and him have been cheating on their spouses for four years. Wow. So she's like, hey, like I know you, I could tell that you had no idea. Like now everything makes sense. Blah blah blah. Um, just so you know, he's like a liar and so a manipulator. He has and a blah, wife. Blah. He had a wife. He had a wife he had and a girlfriend, girlfriend and, and you. <laughs> Number three chosen. <laughs> love it i didn't know though like of i of course not. and here's the thing here's the crazy thing is like i i'm a I'm, i feel like i'm very perceptive with people and the biggest thing of all of this was i i didn't i wasn't i wasn't like heartbroken like yeah i felt stupid and whatever like oh my god wow so sad i knew this guy i knew we weren't gonna get married but i really liked him i was just like i can't believe the guy? yeah i can't believe i didn't you know what i mean like i can't believe and i didn't see any how of this old you were this was like not too long ago, but that's what I'm saying to you. Like, mm. that's how fooled I was. And everybody in my life who met him loved him. Mm. Everybody in my life who met him was like, this guy is mm. insane, like mm -hmm. incredible. And every person, when I told them, they were like, I can't fucking believe it. Yeah. So that's it. That's my best story. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had this a relationship where he was treating me like just emotional abuse and like just like putting me down nonstop and like treating me like shit at some point like he was good for a little bit but he was so nice to everybody else to all of my friends too. like it I was it was like a typical i don't even want to start with like the labels and narcissists yeah, and whatever yeah, yeah. but it's like you're putting on such a show yeah. for everyone else so if i come up and i say like hey this relationship they're gonna is, be like what they're gonna be like are you okay like he's so good like yeah. he's, he's amazing towards everyone so that's not possible but i do want to talk about things that I've seen in my past from some of my friends who were cheating on their girls or something and some ways that you can maybe find out if somebody's cheating on you. So if you are maybe on a phone plan together, you can go, like if you have T-Mobile, you can go to your T-Mobile account and see who you're messaging, like where the message is going constantly because everything is listed out, phone calls, same thing. You can't see that on WhatsApp. So a lot of cheaters go on WhatsApp and they go on Snapchat, I feel like. Maybe on Instagram. If too. a man told me to download Snapchat right now, I would run. I mean, that's a baby. Like, I would run. But maybe we have some, like... But yeah, WhatsApp, queen, you can like archive... Girls, you can yeah. archive conversations. So, like, if somebody opens your WhatsApp, you can't even see them. And this guy would put a code on WhatsApp. So even mm -hmm. to open the app, not even to open his phone, mm -hmm. like he had a code to unlock his phone. Yeah. But then to open the app, yeah. he had a code on it. And yeah. I remember one day I was like, I never look at people's phones. I find that like yeah. such an invasion of privacy. Like even with my friends, I'm not gonna like look at what yeah. you're doing unless you're showing me something. Cause I don't like when people look at my phone. Mm -hmm. I'm not hiding anything aside from fire ass nudes. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I would like, one day we were sitting <clears throat> next to each other and he had his phone like just in my face and he unlocked it. Also, he had like the longest one. Yeah. I feel like that's a red flag. Why mm -hmm. do you, why is long it so long? Password is it was the longest fucking one. Anyway, he unlocks his phone and then he goes to open WhatsApp and there's a fucking thing on WhatsApp too. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I looked over and I'm like, why do you have a, I was mm -hmm. like, that's so much work. I said yeah. it literally like laughing. I was like, oh my yeah. God, that's so much work, babe. And <laughs> Dumb bitch. And he, you know what he said? Again, it was so believable. Like it was so believable. Cause he, at that point I already knew uh -huh. about his son and uh -huh. he was like, Oh, I put that because oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to say yeah. his son's name, but he was like, my son one day got in my WhatsApp mm -hmm. and started messaging oh. people. And I was like, Oh my God, that's cute. The amount believable. of stories I've heard that were like believable, but just like, bro, but that wouldn't you believe that? I would, but now I know better. No, obviously now I like, don't believe yeah. any, a man could tell me his name and I'm like, that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like i could ask a man yeah. the time and i'd be like yeah. let me just double check yeah you know i mean some people i know they also have like fake emails and they're like cheating with emails like i've i think i mean i've just seen so much Same. not from my own experience always but like friends and like can i tell you one yes please he um, would i didn't know about this because i'm not psycho I mean, I am, but like, I wasn't that psycho. He would send me, so he would call me every night, mm -hmm. right? And one night he called me, I didn't, I wasn't able to pick up the phone. So I called him back and he's like, babe, I can't talk. I'm on the phone with my, with my parents. His parents lived abroad. And I was like, okay, obviously I believe you, right? Yeah. And he would send me screenshots. Mm -hmm. I feel like this motherfucker had an album For sure. of just screenshots that he would take when he was actually on the phone with his parents. Mm -hmm. I didn't know this. 
But if somebody sends you a photo and you swipe up and like you swipe up on the photo, you can see when they took it. You can Mm -hmm. see if it's a screenshot. Mm -hmm. You can see the location. If it's a screenshot, you can't see anything aside from it saying screenshot and the time of the screenshot. So you don't know when the original photo was taken. Mm -hmm. But somebody told me this after the fact. So then once I like once everything unfolded, I went back and I looked at a few of the pictures. Bro, they were all from like months before. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. I will tell you what I, me and my girlfriends used to do when we were in New York and we were trying to like play with men. We would I love this. literally fake our afternoon. We would fake our weekend. We would fake like like stories. Yeah, yeah. It's it so would, easy to do that. Yeah, but but not it was that I was like, doing it. I'm just saying. <laughs> not that I'm doing. No, but like at that time, it was not really common to post after. You're like it was almost like stories were posted in the in moment. the moment. Yeah, yeah. You're so right. like if I had, I remember there was my this girl that I was hanging out with, and she wanted to make a guy jealous. Yeah, so we all posted that we're all in the Hamptons, and that was like wow. maybe three weeks before. Teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah, but it's more believable if it's coming from like Other your people. friend, and you're just like reposting. Reposting. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, but. I actually so funny. I was just talking to one of my friends yesterday and she was doing the same thing. And she's like, yo, do you have any stock photos that I can use? Oh my God, I've been there so many. Like <laughs> with my friends, we've done yeah. this too. And I sent her like some of my like dinners where you can like see the two things shoes. that we do. Yeah. But I honestly, as I was sending it to her, I didn't want to like tell her, yo, what, what are you doing? But I was just thinking I'm in such a different place in yeah. my life right now yeah. that I even thinking about that just just brings me back to that time when I, I was like if you have to do this i know i was just gonna say i love you but if you are trying to do this or you feel like you have to do this to make sure that somebody is still interested in you yeah. fucking run like you don't have to do that yeah you don't have to do that i think what hurts me is seeing women think they have to do certain things to keep a man it's like mm-hmm. you don't actually yeah and it makes me sad that you think you do but i was once there and yeah. it took a long time but that's where i'm like this conversation yeah we can laugh about it and like oh you know we do these things and we do these things honestly bottom line yes i think who you're around and the relationships that you witness and i feel like your childhood like there's a lot of things obviously so many variables that come into play with this conversation so i want to be careful when i say this but i think for me personally the biggest the biggest component of this that has helped me change the way i see relationships the way i see myself the way i treat myself the way i handle my my relationships is working on my Mm self-worth because when you know your worth it sounds so cliche but when you know that's why i have what your worth tattooed no literally when you know what you're worthy of when you know your value when you know the things that you expect the things that you deserve you will literally laugh when you Mm -hmm. think about entertaining something yeah less yeah and and that's where i'm at now and i'm so fucking grateful i will say it's harder because the more that you know you're worth the less you accept but i don't care i'd rather accept literally a crumb that is incredible than like you know what i mean it doesn't i don't care i had a phase in my life where my self-worth was zero same like non-existent and that's when all of these stories were happening. happening and that's what i was attracting i was attracting men who would treat me poorly who would just like see me as an object who would just entertain me because i was attractive to them but when i started working and i've been through a lot of therapy and i was like this really saved my life it saved my self-image my self-worth and obviously i'm still constantly like working on it yeah but i just feel like if everybody's going through like if you feel like what we were saying in the very beginning like if something feels that this is not supposed to be like that just like trust that it's not yeah but make sure you're not just like um you're not sabotaging sabotaging yeah because we also do that a lot we're like and that happened to me with wes actually in the beginning because i just didn't even believe that i have such a good guy next to me and i was like how is this possible and like you know i was a He's very private. I'm a social media person. So like that was another adjustment. But we could have both just like walked away at that mm-hmm. point. We could have just been like, you know, you're super private. I'm super public. So like I want a public mind. Like, yeah, you have to find those compromises. If, But the best part is that when you work on it together, when you both just show that you're willing to make it work. And I remember in my previous relationships that I was like the one who was trying to fix it. And I was the one who was like, let's please go to therapy. 
and then he would just like i had this one guy that I, we went to one therapy session that i paid for after the therapy i was just crying the entire time a couple's therapy crying the entire time he was just like sitting there like a fucking <laughs> he was just sitting there and after we left he was good for like that evening and then he did the same thing like day after and i'm like this is just this is just very difficult when you said you couldn't believe how good it was at the beginning with wes i think that's it made me think about how important it is and this is like my biggest struggle is while you're working on your worth and your confidence and all of that remember like truly how important it is to spend that like the things that we might feel like we want to avoid like oh i don't want to go to therapy you know th it's hard i don't want to work on myself i, I don't i don't want to like face the things about me that i don't like mm -hmm. that's not fun work yeah. you know maybe it is for me maybe actually, i have now. to maybe i have to isolate because i have to like work through some things like whatever it is it's so important to work so much on your worth so that when the good things start coming you know that you deserve them mm -hmm. and you don't try to sabotage them yeah. like you're like oh this is what i deserve one of my favorite things that like while i was a little bit self-sabotaging what wes would say he was like i'm not gonna gang up on you against you because i would be like i was you i would he would also look at me and he's like who are you fighting with because this is not who you are like because when you get into this fight or flight mode you're just like doing whatever you used to do and expect the same reaction from right. them but he was just like so girl come on like you know i love you like i don't know what you're doing but yeah i was still sabotaging a bit but thank god I stopped i love that is this like the end of the episode i think so i mean this was lovely i Loved feel like it. i uh, we could talk about this for open literally my soul hours. here i'm kind of like uh hopefully nobody's gonna like share this episode with anybody no i don't <laughs> think so thankfully well oh my god that's another thing if he doesn't have social media love that well i did too but this man didn't have any social media and now i'm like i used to think that was such a great thing the thing is i didn't even judge i don't judge what people want to have or don't have yeah but now everybody's like oh you should have seen that coming because he didn't have any social media maybe he did just the secret one no no i looked like you know we are fbi yeah, agents yeah, like yeah, we are anyway yeah. um loved this little dating cheating yeah. mix dating cheating with, i did. feel a bit of an anxiety uh really? like attacking my stomach right now because i'm reliving because of yeah, yeah. okay it's okay we're gonna jump to a Take happier a subject next yeah okay okay bye love bye hey